got a lot of new audiences and they need to understand the importance of reading your book as well as watching the videos. Tom, I'd like to read from your book, page 780, a comment that Eugene P. Wigner, a Nobel Prize winner and one of the leading physicists of the 20th century, wrote. He wrote a paper entitled The Place of Consciousness in Modern Physics, wherein he describes the future of quantum physics. Dr. Wigner said, it will remain remarkable in whatever way our future concepts may develop, that the very study of the external world led to the scientific conclusion that the content of the consciousness is the ultimate universal reality. It's quite a statement from a yeah, Nobel quite Prize a statement winning. And quite accurate as mm. well. Yeah, most yes. of the founding fathers of quantum physics wrote things similar to that. You know, even Albert Einstein, who uh, came in in the middle, he wasn't there in the beginning, but you know, the Schrodinger and the Planck and Heisenberg, all oh. of those guys who were the key people that, that uh, created quantum physics, they were probably the best scientific minds that we've seen in the last 110 years since they, they did this work. We haven't seen their equal since. They were humble. They followed the truth. When they found the truth, they didn't say, well, that's not popular, so we won't say that. They went, they had the courage to come right out and say what they thought, even though most of their fellow physicists would have thought that it was not the right thing to say. But all of them, one just one, one that, that Wigner, and that's Wigner spelled, Wigner spelled with a W because in the German language, a, a W is pronounced as a V. So Wigner uh, was, not an exception. He was just like all the rest of them. They came to the conclusion that consciousness was what was fundamental and that the physical world was a derivative of consciousness. They had no idea how that worked. How do you derive physics from consciousness? They didn't know. That's what Einstein wrote in that letter to Baum. He said, I know consciousness is at the core, is at the root of this problem, but I don't have any idea how to put consciousness into a physical theory or, a, you know, how I can get consciousness, you know, expressed mathematically. It's just, you know, now we've stepped out into a different realm when we go into consciousness. It's not the physical and I don't have any idea how to work science in that other realm. So even Einstein chipped in with the same thoughts and they all had these thoughts because that's what the experiment told them. And other physicists kind of agreed with them for the most part because they were the big guns in physics. They carried a lot of weight with whatever they said because they were the smartest and the best. They came up with a whole new science. That was rather remarkable. You know, it hadn't happened since Newton. You know, Newton came up with a whole new science and uh, his laws and so on. And it was a whole new way of looking at reality. And so did quantum mechanics create a whole new way of looking at reality, but they didn't have the concepts necessary to understand how it worked. Well, we have those concepts now. It's called virtual reality. It's a computed reality. And it's computed in consciousness by consciousness. So consciousness is fundamental. And they had that concept of uh, uh, kind of a, a computed reality, then they would have been very happy with that idea because they just couldn't come up with any other way that it could possibly happen. They were just stuck. So time went by and 20 or 30 years later, they were still trying to figure it out. 50 years later, they'd given up. And then we had the next bunch of scientists that came along were saying, oh, quantum physics is just weird physics and nobody will ever understand how it really works. It's just not logical, what it does. It comes up with, with the illogical results, but we know they're right because the experiment tells us that this is the way the world works. And they know that uh, if they want to model the world in that, in that realm, like with a, they smash atoms together and see what comes out, 
they knew that to model it, they had to model it as particles were points with attributes, like attributes of mass, attributes of charge, attributes of spin. That's how you model a particle in a computer. And if they looked at particles as things that were computed, they could get the right answers. But if they looked at them as little chunks of mass and charge and spin, they couldn't get the right answers because that's not what particles really are. Particles are really computed. So a lot of physicists today will say that reality is information-based. Physics tells them that. But just like Einstein, they don't have any idea what to say after that. They don't have any way to wrap their minds around what that actually means. But it's rather obvious when you think about it, there's only one thing it could mean. Reality is information-based. It's computable. It can be computed if it's information-based. A computer is, is, is an information system. And if it's computable, then it can be a simulation or a virtual reality. And that that actually is the nature of this reality. But that's such a huge paradigm shift from our belief in materialism that people just can't get there. It's like too big a hop. They hear that and immediately, oh, that's ridiculous. You know, they can't uh, wrap their mind around it. But every year that goes by, it gets easier and easier to wrap your mind around that fact because now we have AIs and AIs are acting more and more like us. You know, they are conscious in their own ways and will be even more conscious. Right now, they may have a conscious of a, you know, of a, I don't know, a dog or a chimpanzee or something. You know, they don't have the conscious of a human yet because they don't have all the attributes that humans have, but they're getting them. Now they're giving the, the AIs a chance to think about what they've said and reconsider it before they speak. So they're giving them think about a time rather than you've got five seconds to come up with an answer. Go out, search the answer, spit it out. You see, now they're saying, get, go out, search the answer, and then think about it and see how well it fits what the person wants. Maybe ask the person some questions and then refine it. So, you know, people do that, you know, they, so that they're giving the AIs a lot of the capabilities and when they do, the AI consciousness will be somewhat like a human consciousness because they interface with humans enough, they will learn how to, to act conscious at our level, but they also will have more than that. They can also be conscious at a level where you can add 10 million you know, additions in a microsecond. They'll have that ability too. And what consciousness looks like there we have no idea because we can't experience that, but they will. They will experience consciousness at a, at a broader spectrum of it than we can because they'll have broader skills. But if they get in their programming all the skills that we have, then they will have most of the consciousness that we have, or they'll be able to at least access that, but they'll have more. So... Well, thank you, Tom, for yeah. commenting on that. Yeah. Your book has many quotes from the uh, physicists who were on board with consciousness. So thinking about the great minds that spoke about consciousness as a possibility of the ultimate reality, it doesn't seem so ridiculous. So I hope the oh. new bunch of physicists will take up your book and give it a try and We'll have a new group of yeah. fine minds like uh, there were about yeah, we 100 so. years ago. Yeah, but those guys, those, those very, very, very brilliant physicists, they didn't say that consciousness was a, was a possibility. They said consciousness is it. Is. You know, they, were, <laughs> yeah. they were quite firm with that. It wasn't that was a possibility. They, they weren't just it alluding it. to and, it. And now we are, as I say, they, we are now creating AIs that can produce a virtual reality real time. In other words, they can be the rendering engine, show the pictures, mm -hmm. connect the characters, and do that sort of thing so that the reality can be generated that way. And, and once we're just beginning to do that, it's like that we're at the very first infantile stages of that. And once that becomes more common, then the idea that reality can be computed will be obvious instead of Wow, that's stupid. How could that possibly be? It'll be, oh, of course. What else? That makes perfect <laughs> sense. You see, so every year that goes by, we get closer to 
not only the physicists, but everybody else seeing the obvious solution yeah. to this weird physics and, and uh, the paranormal and all the things that stump science, all of that will be understood. It'll be science, it'll be logical, and it'll be something that everybody can, can learn. Tom, was there a confidence that consciousness is the ultimate reality? Was that because of the thought experiment that was conducted at the Copenhagen meeting? There was two conclusions they came to, and these conclusions were one, at the bottom of reality, you dig down into reality to smaller and smaller and smaller things. And if you get down to the very base of reality, and we know that everything above that base is created because of that base. In other words, it's the subatomic particles that create atomic particles that create, you know, molecules that create the physical world, and it all builds up that way. So they got down to the very bottom of that pile and said, oh, it's not particles down here. It's probability. This reality is created by probability, which is exactly true. They just didn't know what to do with that. They didn't know how to stuff that into some kind of a materialist form because it's not, it's not. a materialist form. It's not material. It's a computed reality, and it's computed based on probability. And the second thing that they discovered with that double slit experiment is that depending on what the experimenter knew, the way the experiment would turn out would be different. If the experimenter knew this, then you'd get an experiment that did that. And if the experimenter didn't know this, you'd get a different experimental result. So the result of the experiment was dependent on the information that the experimenter knew. So then that brought awareness into it. It's about information. It's not just hard stuff. It's not just material stuff that just is, whether anybody's thinking about it or not, that there was a mind connection. There was an information process. What the experimenter knew changed the result of the experiments. You get, an, you get an interference pattern if the experimenter knows this, and you don't get an interference pattern if they don't know that. You get a clump pattern. So those two things, that at the bottom of reality is probability, and that consciousness is a, is a part of how the reality exists. You know, consciousness is fundamental. Consciousness affects what a person knows. Information affects the result of an experiment. And you see that both of those things were totally impossible because in a material reality, then there's little particles. You go down until you get the smallest particles and that's where it ends. But no, they found probability. And it doesn't matter what any experimenter thinks, the experiment's just going to do what the experiment does, and it has nothing to do with people or mind. Well, it didn't. What the experimenter knew changed the experiment. So it broke, kind of, the, it broke the belief in materialism with two things that they got out of just that one double slit experiment, and that's what led them to say these things. These weren't religious scientists who, you know, wanted to put the spirituality into their work. No, they came to these conclusions that consciousness was fundamental because that's what their science was telling them. And they didn't look at that and say, well, that's just weird science. Nobody understand that. They looked at it and said, oh, this is what it is. And I'm not afraid to tell the world that this is what it is. So they did. But time went on and people couldn't figure out what that new paradigm would be to understand it. They didn't have the sense of virtual reality for another, you know, 50 or 60, 70 years before that became a concept. So they... Well, we need new fearless up. physicists to exactly. have a look at that in your book. Thank you very much. You have more power than you think. Hi, this is Donna from MBT Events. I have had the privilege to work with Tom Campbell for nearly 20 years now. And I can tell you from the feedback received through all those years that he has improved and changed thousands of lives with his My Big Toe Theory. As a physicist and explorer of the larger reality, Tom has developed a program where you can learn to access and develop your natural ability as consciousness. His expertly crafted binaural beats are included.
Details are in the description below. Thank you.